Hello, I'm Judy Stiles. Thank you for joining us this week on Newsmakers. Well, it's the time of year when we visit with faculty at Missouri Southern who are ending their careers in higher education and retirement. And joining me today, Dr. Richard Laird from Math Department. Thank you for being here today. Oh, you're welcome. I know one of the questions people probably ask you as the time gets closer, we're recording this toward the end of the semester, but your feelings as you see this retirement looming in front of you. Um, scared, hopeful, um, <laughs> ready for change. Mm -hmm. um, this will be the first summer I've had off in years. <laughs> so a lot of difference is coming yeah, around. Yeah, it's okay. going to be a lot different, but right. uh, I'm looking forward to it. I have mm -hmm. all kinds of projects I'm involved in right at the moment. So so it's a, so turning over a new opportunity for you mm -hmm. in many cases. So, well, on this program, I'd like to share with the audience a little bit about your background and your plans, as well as you know your interest, area of interest. But I guess we need to start off with your, what we call the phase retirement program yes, at Southern. Yes, the uh, phase retirement. Um, I'm, going to be doing that for two years mm -hmm. after, the, after the end of the semester starting next fall. Um, we teach uh, half time, we collect half of our pay, mm -hmm. and we still get to keep our uh, health insurance mm -hmm. and we can start collecting our uh, uh, benefits or retirement. Oh, okay. So it's so it's a nice. I could way probably to start collecting s uh, Social Security, but if I'm going to put that off for a couple of years, I think I get a little bit more that way. But right, right. It builds up the longer you wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's a nice way to kind of ease out of teaching yes. and tying yes. things together <laughs> along those lines. Well, you've been at Missouri Southern for since 2000. Yes, started uh, fall of 2000, so this be my 19th year. Mm -hmm. So I know a lot of our viewers are often interested in uh, what led you to your path of interest, and of course, ma being a mathematics professor, people say, well, what, what's sparked your initial interest in your life well doing that. my dad was a math teacher mm -hmm. at uh, what at the time it was Kansas State Teachers College in Emporia mm -hmm. Kansas uh, which is where I went to school mm -hmm. and it just I never really thought about doing anything else <laughs> but so and I after I graduated, I was originally going to teach high school and until I was a student teacher, and I kind of went, no, I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> so the age of the high school students were a challenge. Well, no, one of the students, it oh. was, uh, I did my student teaching someplace where they had uh, let a teacher go for not being a very good teacher, mm. and he got then got elected to the school board. <sighs> And so the relations between the school board and the uh, high school administration mm -hmm. were not real good. Right. And so it wasn't a real good situation. Mm -hmm. So it kind of turned me off of that. And so I did other stuff, construction, and uh, worked in factories, mm -hmm. uh, stayed home and raised my daughter for about a year and uh, until I finally decided I wanted to maybe do something when I grew up. <laughs> right, right. What am I going to do with the rest of my life? Yeah, right, yeah. Right. Then I ended up going back to grad school. Mm -hmm. And I was just going to be a high school teacher again. I right. decided, well, maybe I should go ahead and do that. But then some of my professors said, you should go on and get a doctorate. And I went, okay, stay in school? Sure. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> so Emporia State for the Master's? Yeah, and Emporia State for the Master's. PhD. And then PhD at Kansas State University in Manhattan, Kansas. Okay. So. So many years of study, as people know, the dedication uh, it takes to get a PhD. Yes, <laughs> math is the uh, only thing longer than math is philosophy. I think. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so it took me a little longer than it should have because I went out and got a full-time teaching job. I should have had one year to finish, mm -hmm. but you know that. Okay, you were working your, as a teacher. Right? Your salary, <laughs> I'll take that, mm -hmm. and it ended up taking me five more years. Which worked out because the job at Missouri Southern would not have opened up if I would have got finished back at the 1995 or six or whenever it was. So Mary Elick retired and right. replaced her. Mm -hmm. So but anyway, but so I'm so I've been here at Southern since 2000 mm -hmm. and working that. So teaching became something that you really sparked your interest when you got a PhD. A lot of people think you automatically go into teaching, but there's options as well. Oh yeah, yeah. there's there's one of the well during the 90s there was the big dot com boom, mm -hmm. and we had professors that. We were making like 30000 as an assistant professor, and they got hired away to go work at Bell Labs for triple that amount. <laughs> <Right>. So <laughs> they kind of went, yeah, I'll do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then that went bust. I think they came back to teaching. They went to teaching, <laughs> right. <laughs> so you had that interest in teaching from an earlier age, with some mm -hmm. interest, and then uh, approaching the college classroom atmosphere. Tell me about that aspect of it. Yeah, it, uh, I like teaching the college. Uh, it's got a, first off, the subject matter is more interesting mm -hmm. because, you know, if you ask any math teacher college what they like to teach, it's always the upper division stuff. That's the stuff that's interesting to right. us. Um, 
course, then the lower the ones, that's what pays Everybody has salary. to teach that too, right? So, yeah, right. yeah pay the, get to do those too. Uh, I kind of remind you that struggles people go through when they're first learning it, which mm -hmm. we all went through too. Right. But, uh, um, enjoy it and also no parents <laughs> right right in high school you have the parents who are coming and talking mm -hmm. to you so in college when you're dealing with math majors that's an aspect where you have students sharing your passion your interest oh, yeah. in the field that yeah it's those are fun I mean it's just we have one class it's uh, kind of what we call the introduction to proof class mm -hmm. it's, uh, junior level and that's the let's weed out the applied mathematicians from uh, people who might want to go to graduate school mm -hmm. the ones who like math 300 we right. say you should go to grad school <laughs> right because that's the part of it they like so mm -hmm. so are you able to pick those students out in the classroom uh pretty well right. it's there's mm -hmm. somewhat sometimes some of them fool us but right. uh there's some of them that kind of sit off real quiet and you don't see much of them. Then you get your first test and, hmm, I got a perfect score. They understand this, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, like, oh, they seem to like this and enjoy right. it. So. So that must be rewarding when you see your students go on to the graduate school oh, at yeah. further levels. Yeah, it's, uh, we, uh, we kind of like to say it's not real hard to get accepted into a graduate program in math. Mm -hmm. um, the main thing they need in a graduate school in math is lots of bodies because you tend to have big uh, graduate schools in math where mm -hmm. they have engineering schools that need the graduate students to teach all the you know, calculus classes and all those things, um, which I thought I was a pretty good teacher back then. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so they have a lot of them. And, uh, Staying in graduate school, you got to pass those classes. Right, they get a little tougher. So that's when you have the to hard part. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Staying there. Mm -hmm. So it's a big part of your challenge, maybe in the undergraduate levels, preparing students for the challenge they'll find later in that graduate mm -hmm. school. Yeah, you kind of want to, uh, kind of want to baby them, and then they go, okay, but if they could have go to graduate school, we better kind of make sure you know, <laughs> yeah, toughen them up a little bit. Make sure you're going to handle it, right? They don't take prisoners in grad school very much. Right. Well, you have the students who love math and have the degrees, and then you have the situations. A lot of students they say have math anxiety. Mm -hmm. So that must be also an aspect of teaching that people oh, yeah. don't realize. That. Yeah, that's uh, a lot of people. You just have a very negative aspect, and if you talk to them. And it, you get a lot of stories of, I used to love math until I hit this grade and I had this terrible teacher, mm. and which makes us kind of want to train those high school teachers, teachers a lot better. better motivate their students, right? <laughs> yeah, try to get ones that actually like math. We've mm -hmm. got some, several that have gone out teaching, and I would love to get their students <laughs> because right. they're really good and they like math. So. so do you work with a lot of our education majors who would be teaching math? Are you um, going through to, to help we'll inspire get quite them? quite a few of them because mm -hmm. they, if, depending on whether they're secondary or middle school, the middle school, they have to go through Calc 1. Mm -hmm. um, the, Secondary, they pretty much just almost like a straight math major, right. which is why I ended up getting a Bachelor of Science in Education in Math. Mm -hmm. I was going to go just straight math, and my dad said, you might as well get a teaching degree because you'll take the same classes anyway. Right. So, okay. <laughs> I'll prepare you for it and tie mm -hmm. it together. So, so what kind of tips do you give to those students who come in and say, you know, I just I have this anxiety. Is math something I've always worried about? How does um, a professor deal with that? Uh, it's, do you just try to make help them relax? Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, let them know that this was a struggle, and I did, you know, did it too. And of course, some of them, they don't bother they, don't they believe, believe me, yeah. but uh, I always tell them that, you know, these problems will, they maybe look easy when I'm doing them, but mm -hmm. they'll look easy to you after you've done 10 or 20,000 of them too. <laughs> right. So, but uh, you try to get them to relax, and uh, I try to use humor in class, and mm -hmm. so then I make mistakes on the board, because everybody makes mistakes in math. You show almost. that it's a fact of life, yeah, right? Yeah, you, you almost learn more from making mistakes than you do from doing things right, so. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I know um, Missouri Southern, we have the new Nixon Hall, and part uh, of that they talked about when they built it is the environment helping yes. students. Yes. Uh, we're trying to, we got the classroom. First off, we absolutely love our new building. Thank mm -hmm. you, Governor Nixon. Right. <laughs> um, but it's just, it's a wonderful building. Um, there's places for the students to study or can just socialize. Mm -hmm. uh, I walked into one of the little study areas and there's big TVs in there and uh, they were watching uh, a television show on there. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Which the, they're relaxing while oh, they're yeah, studying, yeah, right? Yeah. Then, uh, but they're oftentimes they're working in there. You can mm -hmm. write on the walls. Mm -hmm. uh, we give them just put dry erase markers all over the building, and uh, it's harder to find a wall you can't write on than one you can right. write on. That's so, good. so that helps them visualize. Mm -hmm. And plus, we got uh, like all the walls in the classroom, all four of them, mm -hmm. you can write on. Oh, and okay. so it's very easy to send students to the board as opposed mm -hmm. to you know crowding them. 
together, but right. uh, we got lots of room to do that, and we can rearrange desks, and so mm -hmm. we want to work in groups or something, and because we got the desks are actually can move them around, so they're not your standard out. college desk with yeah. a little. We're on yeah. wheels, and mm -hmm. we actually got chairs and bigger desks, and they actually fit the book, and mm -hmm. well, not that we have books very much anymore, but right. uh, yeah, that's just. So it's an environment they're not intimidated by the building itself. It yeah. really helps it's, it's that. Like mm -hmm. Dr. Johnson, our math department head, said, mm -hmm. not only in math, we're kind of used to working in a dungeon <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> but uh, like I said, it's the my office now, which I'm going to be in for one semester. Right. <laughs> After I retire, I move to another building. But it's the first time in 19 years I've had a window. So, so the addition really made a big difference for yes. you and your department. Oh, yeah. Only, well, everybody got windows. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, almost. But <laughs> <laughs> now, when you talked about working on the walls, writing on the walls, you found that it's helpful for students to collaborate or learn to support each other in learning math? Oh, yeah. It's um, always like learn better to group mm -hmm. than you do by yourself. And it's not that maybe you don't understand it and somebody helps you understand. I mean, that goes on too. Right. But I think the biggest part of the learning is for somebody who can organize it well enough in their own mind, they can then explain it to somebody mm -hmm. else. That means they really understand it. Right. So when you're helping someone else, you're almost helping yourself out more than you are them. So, which is also why we encourage our students to work as tutors over mm -hmm. in the Student Success Center. Right. Right. Um, we send a lot of them over there. And that's a valuable service Missouri Southern has oh, for yeah. those students. It, you'll find that at almost any university anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, that one p big part of the graduate school at K-State was they had these big you know, tutoring sessions, mm -hmm. help sessions. It went on almost all day long. Uh, four professors were in there, graduate students. Mm -hmm. They hired some undergraduates to work in there mm -hmm. too. But uh, we helped a lot of people. <laughs> that's great. But do you find that one of the secrets for students or key to success is they have to ask for that help? You know, that sometimes students thing. hesitate. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like, you know, they're kind of, sometimes they can be a little intimidated, I think. Mm -hmm. just, I don't know why, just because we're brilliant. <laughs> but uh, anyway. <laughs> well, we think we are anyway. But uh, yeah, it's uh, sometimes it's hard to go in and ask for questions because you mm -hmm. just think that somebody's going to, maybe they've tried before and somebody said, what, you don't understand this? And then you know, it's like, no, of course you don't understand it. Mm -hmm. Nobody does first time. So so you have to go through that process about mm -hmm. trying to help them learn to understand it. Yeah. So and and the one thing you try to do is help them learn how to learn it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. sometimes uh, when I've been, I've done tutoring as well, we used right. to have a, what we call Calc Lab. And, so kind of specifically for students who are going through the calc Calculus. sequence, mm -hmm. so we kind of expanded it for anybody. Uh, but if you're trying to help some student in a class you haven't taught for a long time, then it's like, I uh, kind of remember how to do this. Uh, let's go through the book and look up and see if we can find you know things that apply or mm -hmm. examples or something like that. So you're helping them figure out how to learn it on their own. So, so it benefits both parties involved mm -hmm. in a tutoring situation. Oh, yeah. So, right. Well, we've seen a lot of emphasis, of course, in our society and in the United States, especially about STEM education. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned that's really been something that you as a mathematician have really appreciated that oh, yeah. national emphasis for that. Uh, actually, oh, yeah. It's, I mean, when I first went to school, it was right after the Sputnik. Mm -hmm. So there was a big push for science and math back right. then. And then it kind of died out a little bit. And then now there's a big push again. So right. um, it, everything's always Kind of goes in a phase. Yeah, and, it's yeah. kind of mm -hmm. up and down and up and down. Right. So, but yeah, it's really good to see that. Man. Although there's, you know, we like students who can write well. Right. <laughs> we like students there's other who can elements of being well. a student. Oh, yeah. Right. It, mm -hmm. You got to learn to do all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes they talk about how students in the, you know, international students, they have such a better, you know, grounding in some of the, the whatever subject they're in, but a lot of the schools over there, that's all they study. If you're a math major, you don't do anything except math. Mm. So they don't have any of the history and mm. arts and all that stuff, which also I've discovered as I've gotten older, I said, I wish I would have paid more attention to my art appreciation class, because <laughs> I really like art now. So. so that liberal arts education where you're learning variety is really benefits all the oh, students yeah. and everyone involved. In a like I say, setting. you never know what you're going to find interesting later on, and it's things you Boy, I wish I would have paid more attention to that class. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I know you've been involved at Missouri Southern Beyond the Classroom. You've been mm -hmm. involved with the Faculty Senate as well. Yes, I've been on Faculty Senate. Uh, I was, I'm on there now as a at-large representative. Mm -hmm. A few years back, I was, I was kind of my gift to the math department. I would do the three-year stint on Faculty Senate, right. so nobody else would have to. <laughs> Sometimes not a lot of people, they're not their favorite thing to do, but I've kind of enjoyed it. That's mm -hmm. one of the few places I get to meet other people around campus. Right. It's hard to get out of your building sometime. Mm -hmm. So um, I get to meet those, and 
at this point, I'm kind of like, well, I, somebody brings something up. I said, well, we tried that back in 2006, and it didn't work at all back then, and here's why, and maybe we shouldn't try it again, or mm -hmm. something like that. So you have a little bit of the institutional memory. But. Right. Now, for viewers who are watching, they say, what does Faculty Senate do? I mean, really, it's a means uh, of communicating? And yeah, it's a way to communicate the faculty desires to the administration and concerns and mm -hmm. things like that, and also the administration uh, communicates to the faculty. Right. Right. as well and uh, I'm on the executive committee so we get to meet we get extra meetings yeah, we'll executive meetings right, <laughs> yeah. right, right. Uh, we get to meet with the president's council and uh, we usually do that a week before the faculty senate meetings mm -hmm. and we kind of okay here's some of our concerns for this month and then the, uh, Dr. Marble and Dr. Carson and anybody else who might be apply can come in and kind of address those questions okay. and uh, that we usually get a report on uh, what the budget looks like up in Jeff City, which is they usually, keep you posted. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, we don't know what's going on yet, but maybe mm -hmm. something good will happen. <laughs> but, uh, right. The big questions each year: what's going to happen? Uh, yeah. right. mm -hmm. Well, I know uh, Faculty Senate is working with uh, Staff Senate and Student Senate a lot of different common projects, but one of those was the campus-wide tobacco ban. And yes, you know, I was actually kind of involved. I <laughs> I learned something very important. I, actually, all got all got started from the Student Senate. Right. And uh, it was Brittany Lamp, mm -hmm. a young lady, who kind of got the whole thing pushed through student senate and then they brought it to us and I was on the executive committee back then too and we were talking about it at the president's council and I was kind of saying well we ought to do this and we ought to do this and then Dr. Marvel said yes you should I went, oh, <laughs> we became I you be quiet in these meetings <laughs> yeah. so I kind of got uh, tasked with uh, kind of come up with a policy and mm -hmm. uh, I would like to thank Missouri Western for having such a nice policy because I pretty much took their policy <laughs> replaced <laughs> Western with Southern and hey we got ourselves a policy here right. so <laughs> but that sounds like it was an example of uh, collaborative communication and everything mm -hmm. getting something done on campus along yeah so uh, um, now it's of course, there's still you still find cigarette butts on campus. Mm -hmm. Nowhere near as many as you used to, and it's kind of filtered in over the years. Like mm -hmm. first, it was like, oh, I'm not going to do that, and then okay, and then it's kind of accepted now. So, yeah. and society is changing. That's another example of how the campus is adapting to society yes, changes. So far. like I said, I can always speak from experience because I smoked for about 35 years, mm -hmm. and uh, really glad I quit. <laughs> <laughs> so you can say it can be done. Yes, <laughs> it can be done. <laughs> <laughs> well, having been at Missouri Southern for 19 years, almost 20, what some changes that stand out in your mind beyond the, your building coming up? What do yeah, you oh yeah. Uh, just, um, man, um, well, it's, I don't know if I should sometimes say this, but um, one thing I kind of, I noticed when I first got to campus was I just didn't run into very many students of color. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been to like a lot of the bigger universities, like at K-State and Emporia State had a uh, large population. Um, African American, Latino, Indian, right. uh, various Hawaiians, um, but there weren't very many at Missouri Southern, and um, that's gotten a lot better. So diversity has really the increased. Lot, it, mm -hmm. Better diversity, and that's something you appreciate. It's just you want know, mm -hmm. to get people to you know, kind of help them out and you gotta meet other people because when you go out in the world there's all kinds of people out there and you gotta be used to dealing with people that aren't like you. Right. And if everybody's like me I'd be really bored all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of the major changes in the demographics of the university. Of course the size mm -hmm. of the school has changed as well. Enrollment mm -hmm. has increased since yes. then. Yes. Uh, by the way that uh, the med school that came in um, has really helped especially that years to lose program uh, has really helped uh, the, the student uh, enrollment. Uh, mm -hmm. We get a lot with a lot of biology majors, right. you know, pre-med and all that kind of stuff. And a lot of them will bring their friends along and mm -hmm. some of those are turn out to be math majors and plus a lot of them are just really good students and mm -hmm. we like having them in our class. That's great. So, so there's a lot of follow-up benefits to the changes mm -hmm. that we've seen over the years oh, so yeah. far. Well, I know that, you know, students come to campus and we do tours and they visit campus. What do you say to prospective students who are thinking, I'd like to be a math major. Tell me what that involves. How do you well, talk to them? Just, uh, it's hard to get, you never, almost never get a student that 
wants to do something else, you can't, it's very hard to get them to change their mind and be a math major. Mm -hmm. They kind of come in, they either want to do it or they don't, and if they don't, you're probably not going to convince them to do that. They're not going to change like from another said, major to that. Yeah, right? it's mm -hmm. like, well, I kind of like math, I like other stuff better, but we just, you know, ask them, you know, how'd you do in the high school math? Did you mm -hmm. like it? It's, did you like it? And he just, the desire to do it is right. probably the most important thing. Mm -hmm. You know, once they have the desire that, you know, okay, you're going to work hard. Right. <laughs> but uh, that, I mean, we get, I've had some students come in and as freshmen and Calc one or something. Say, my goal is to go on and get my doctorate. And, uh, hmm. So we got a student who's now going to be transferring up to MU for his senior year, and he's planning on going go on and finish up his doctorate doctor through the year. university. Mm -hmm. So, Great. do you think it's helping that it's high school students are able to take maybe more advanced math classes at that level before they come to the university? Yeah, because uh, the AP classes really helped. Mm -hmm. I think they get a kind of a grounding, and they can start a little farther on in their math career. One problem in math is you've got to go through the calc sequence before you kind of we let you loose into to the all other the others, stuff. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and that is like you know, it's like make sure they got the college algebra trig, and then mm -hmm. you got calc one, calc two, calc three. There's a step by step process. Yeah, step by step right. process. So, like if they can come in and start off in calc two, mm -hmm. they can almost you know finish up a year early or something. We've had uh, we had one woman that came in. She's now teaching high school. She came in and announced that I'm planning on graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Education in three and a half years, wow. and she did it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think she was one of our outstanding graduates too. That's so great. <laughs> she's really good. Right. So you've she's seen got a lot two of, of the cutest little babies now too. <laughs> so keeping in touch with those students is probably the oh, graduates, yeah. I should say, yeah, is fun and, part of it. Uh, that's one thing that we use Facebook for because mm -hmm. they kind of one thing they asked us to do a few years back was like, okay, you got to keep track of your graduates to make sure they're doing okay, and you know we can see if they're working in their field. Right. What or do they something. do after they graduate? But right. we had already started a kind of a math uh, alumni page mm -hmm. on Facebook and oh. so we already had a lot of that information already so we were kind of ahead of the game there. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well that's good the keeping up and that's what people want to know what do people do after they graduate. Yeah, uh, that's the thing about math uh, we solve problems mm -hmm. you know there's you can go into teaching but uh, we have people that are uh, doing a lot of data analysis. Mm -hmm. uh, we have people working in Boston and uh, Washington. So there's corporate jobs, oh, Corporate jobs, mm -hmm. uh, government, you can, mm -hmm. uh, everybody needs statisticians. Right. Um, and I got to say that um, the one that just did the uh, algorithms to get the picture of the black hole, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of math involved oh, in yeah. that. And <laughs> like I said, they kind of gave one person the credit for kind of helping develop the algorithm, but like I said, that was a giant team of people who were mm -hmm. working on that thing. So, and so, and they always need math people, so. Okay. So is that something you try to let your students know about the opportunities? You don't have to be just a teacher if you get no, a math huh. degree. There's we other got, things you can uh, do in the world. Data managers, the, I think the guy in kind of in charge of all the computer stuff at uh, Freeman was one of mm -hmm. our majors. Yeah. So. so show them what they can do with that. Mm -hmm. Well, when you talk to your colleagues and they say, well, you're getting ready to retire, you know, what's your tip for success from a professor's point of view? Longevity of the um, university? Try to keep a sense of humor about things. Mm -hmm. Don't take yourself too seriously. <laughs> um, <laughs> How to wear Hawaiian shirts. <laughs> uh, that's one thing I'm almost proudest of. I started mm -hmm. the tradition of uh, in was Reynolds Hall at the time. You know, I just started from the very first week. Uh, Fridays, mm -hmm. I wear Hawaiian shirts. Right. Kind of got. I think three fourths of the building was doing it. They're all going to join in and enjoy Fridays. Yeah, I mean, right. A lot of them have kind of retired by now, so mm -hmm. it's maybe not as many now. But uh, that was one of the things I managed to do. But it's just you know, get involved in things, uh, get to know people. Mm -hmm. Um, if you believe in something, you know, you know argue for it, uh, but don't think you know everything. <laughs> well, it sounds like it's really a profession that, that you have loved and you enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. and so forth. Actually, that's one very nice thing about our new building. Uh, in a Reynolds Hall, we had, you know, an office here, an office there, an office there, and mm -hmm. somebody else was on another floor or something. Right now, all our offices are right together. So, all your so anytime we want to discuss something, half the time it's just to wander out in the hall and start mm -hmm. talking to somebody, and before too long, two or three more show up, and we can discuss something. and. Uh, so, we can so you're really mingling with your colleagues and sharing work around there, <laughs> which is nice. <laughs> well, I know the question a lot of people ask: What are your plans for retirement? I mean, you're obviously going through the phase system. Yes, <laughs> um, I have a lot of uh, woodworking is one of my hobbies, and mm -hmm. so I have several projects <laughs> on, on the works. Know, yeah, my my garage is full of sawdust. Let me put it that way. Um, 
my wife and I both like to go bird watching. Oh. Uh, mm -hmm. Our granddaughter in Colorado is the main focus of our. Uh, right. um, so family ties and family ties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then and, uh, we're going to go out and spoil her rotten. She's mm -hmm. the cutest little girl in the world. <laughs> <laughs> of course. So now you'll have the time to do that. It's not mm -hmm. just I'm going to take off in the summer. You know, yes, we don't have to. Actually, we discovered that Hayes, Kansas, is almost exactly halfway between Joplin and where they live in Colorado, mm -hmm. and so we can both drive six hours and get to Hayes and spend a three-day weekend there and then come back oh, okay. instead of having to spend 12 hours driving, 12 hours you know, You don't can't. lose the whole day traveling yeah. back and forth. Mm -hmm. and together. So that's nice. That's but great. Then we got to spend most, been spending most spring breaks down mm -hmm. in Colorado. <laughs> well, nice place to visit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so what will you miss most about Missouri Southern? Uh, the people I work with. I mean... Mm -hmm. That's the thing that I think I've always enjoyed most about working here is uh, other members of the department, uh, the administrative assistants that we've got to work with. Mm -hmm. They've just been wonderful people. The custodians, I've got to be very good friends with a lot of those. Um, the other departments, I mean, we had uh, both biology and the physical sciences were also in Reynolds, mm -hmm. and very good friends with a lot of those people. And uh, the other people I started with, it's just the people you work with, I mean, mm -hmm. that's what makes or break anything, and they're just a wonderful group here. Great. And it's just been a joy to work with them all. Well, thanks to that social media you mentioned, you keep in touch with them afterwards. Yes. Huh? Oh, yes. <laughs> Let them know how you're doing <laughs> in mm -hmm. retirement as you go along. Well, I'd like to thank you for visiting with me today, sharing oh, some welcome. information, and I know the university wants to thank you for your years of service as well, and they're going to be recognizing like said, faculty like members. Said, it, when you enjoy your job, you're not really work a day in your life. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Dr. Laird, thank you, and I wish you the best of luck in retirement well, after you get through the much. phase system and enjoy the phase retirement as oh, well. Yes. <laughs> thank you. And I'd like to thank you, the viewers, for joining us this week on Newsmakers. I'm Judy Stiles. Hope you can join me again next week at the same time on the station. We'll see you then. Mm -hmm.